Hey, welcome everybody. I'm Matt with Schematical, and today I'm going to talk about neural evolution of augmenting topologies, observable, or NEAT-O for short, NEAT-O. Sounds way better as NEAT-O. NEAT-O is a method of training AIs that don't actually know all their fixed inputs and outputs by still using the basic NEAT principle. Now, if you guys don't know what NEAT is or NEAT neural nets are, Neuroevolution of Augmenting Topologies, feel free to see my other video explaining how the NEAT algorithm works and how I've implemented it. I also am using Chaos Craft, which is my Minecraft NEAT AI implementation, and there are plenty of videos on Chaos Craft all over my channel as well, if you'd like to check that out. So here's the problem. We've got our neural net, and it's got its inputs represented in green and its outputs represented in blue. And when an organism is spawned, we connect the neurons, the inputs to the outputs, so when the inputs see something, they fire off. And this is done somewhat randomly at first. In this example, let's just say they have four eyes that represent what it sees with each one of those eyes. So if it sees wood, then the neuron for wood would fire off whatever output it's connected to. Again, it's more complex than this. See my other video for more information. Now, this works great if you've only got a few things that the creature can see, like in Chaos Trainer. But when you have as many items as Minecraft has, it becomes pretty complex. Let's just say that there's roughly 256 items in the game, and I know that's not exact, and you have four eyes for inputs. That means that you'd have to have four times 256 input neurons to determine every single block that's potentially being seen. The same thing goes for outputs, such as choosing what to craft or what to equip. You have to have an output for every single item in the game that's equipable or craftable. This makes learning very difficult because there's so many options to choose from right off the bat. When you first start learning how to play Minecraft, it isn't essential that you know what a diamond is because you're not going to see that for the first five, ten minutes of the game at least and probably longer if you're just starting out. The same goes for something like knowing how to craft a redstone repeater. It's not essential to the beginning of learning how to play Minecraft. Those type of items only become essential late in the game. Why not simplify it? So I thought about how a player plays the game. And when you first start a game, you don't know every object that is possible to be in the game. You don't know every single type of tile or voxel. You just know what you've observed in your environment. Wood, grass, chickens. The same goes for the neural nets. They only need to know so much to begin playing the game. A lot more to master it, but they only need so many neurons to begin playing the game. And the fewer neurons that they have at the beginning, the simpler it is to train them. So what I did with Nito was to make it so that generation zero, whatever species, they had only the very basic inputs and outputs. Nothing really visual, it doesn't actually have any Minecraft item IDs at all. None whatsoever, as far as what inputs and outputs can go. It has basic like health and things like that. And as they, they were sent out to the environment and as they wander around looking at things and observing, they would make note of those IDs. Now those IDs wouldn't instantly become neurons, they would just get saved to a collection. So let's just say, for example, they happen to encounter in the wild a block of wood. Then they would register that and save that to the collection for use in the next generation to create the neurons. As the organism explores, it might find other resources, like, for example, a chicken, which then the ID for that item would get recorded and sent to the collection and stored for use with future generations as an entity that that species has interacted with. At this point, no neurons have been created to register these. It's just the eyes registering the IDs. So no decisions are made based on seeing these things until the next generation goes to build its child neural net. We do this first by copying over the neurons from the parent to the child. We then roll the dice to see how we want to do this. Do we want to mutate? Do we want to disable? Do we want to just adjust weights? Assuming you get an add new neuron mutation. Then we select one of the items 
from the list of observed item IDs. We then create a neuron corresponding with an I. For this example, if you see a chicken, then the neuron will fire off. Once the mutation process is complete, we put the child neural net back into the simulation to run its course and find out how it scores. It also is observing more objects that can then be fed into that species observable items slash blocks slash entities pool that then will be used in future generations for their neurons. The idea was to make the early game as streamlined as possible, very similar to how real players play. And I don't think I could have done it with anything else except the neat methodology because other ones have fixed inputs and outputs typically. Overall, I would say it increased performance significantly, but we still have plenty of other hurdles to overcome. So if you're interested in hearing more about this stuff, please smash or gently press the like, share, subscribe, notification, all that stuff. And better yet, if you feel like you really like this, share it somewhere with other people. I appreciate, you guys appreciate my work. That's what keeps me going. So thank you very much. Once again, I'm Matt with Schematical. And uh, until next time.